getting ready for a warm weekend. I'll let you know when you can expect even warmer air coming up in the seven day forecast. I take a closer look at drought conditions around the state and how the governor is now stepping in to help. And a doctor turned podcaster on a personal mission to stop physician suicide. And we deal with death every day. We deal with telling people bad news every day. And if there's not a way to process that, it just kind of burns within. Meet the St. Paul woman helping others with her words. Minnesota is changing up how you get in the fast lane. We're answering your questions as Easy Pass gets ready to roll out. How and from the national stage to your living room, none above is here to get your weekend off on the right foot. It's Friday, July 16th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Well, happy Friday. Hey, we are live in Tokyo, Japan this morning. And that countdown clock on your screen, maybe is, is it on your screen? No, it's, there it is. Seven, Seven days, days one week out. Yeah, the games kick off next Friday, which is wild to think, but Sunrisers, Start your Team USA chance with us this morning. Guy, you got your grunts? Yeah. Come on. Ooh. Yes. Woo. Yes. What's that guy's <laughs> going to do his grunt every time before he starts weather? Yes. Yeah. We want folks to tell us their favorite. So maybe, you know, what, shot put, is that your favorite? Mm -hmm. You got to be strong to press this button. Advance to the next graphic. Come but on, no, let's see I'm it. looking forward to track, <laughs> swimming, yeah, uh, a, lot. a lot of good stuff, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, let us know your favorite sport using our favorite hashtag, mm -hmm. Sunrisers, and we're sharing some of your comments coming up. And, you know, I'm noticing some of these flowers out here in the Care 11 backyard, they need some rain, and we need some rain mm -hmm. uh, as the drought conditions not getting any better. Temperatures will be warming up, possible heat wave next week, not the best news. Uh, but other than that, I mean, relatively quiet weather shouldn't slow you down or play a factor in getting in the way of your plans. Temperatures will be in the 80s. You're not tracking any rain or showers or storms heating up come tomorrow. And then we'll see temperatures in the upper 80s again for Sunday. But humidity will be on the rise. 64 got some high level clouds out there right now. Looking over downtown Minneapolis, wind speeds nice and calm for us. Your morning run, coffee, whatever it may be. If you're heading outside, dress for the upper 60s and 70s for the morning hour, late morning. Uh, temperatures flirting with that 80 degree mark. And it is a car way deep in the ditch here along the stretch of 694 eastbound up in the northeast corner at Edgerton Street. Kind of hard to see, but it looks like that car went into the pond. It looks like a tow truck is on the scene. That's the only crash I am tracking around the 694 494 loop. We do have three weekend closures that might impact any of your weekend plans. I'll be talking more about them coming up. We'll take a look at this Minnesota in desperate need of rain. As Guy just talked about, a new drought report shows some areas of the state are now classified as being in an extreme drought. Yeah, and with temps heating up and no rain in the forecast for at least a week, some Minnesota farmers crops are now entering survival mode. That's right. Hannah Conway joins us this morning tracking what's being done to help them. Hannah. Good morning, Alicia and Gia. The good news is that Governor Walls is now stepping in. He just sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Agriculture asking for assistance to help these farmers. So what does that assistance mean for farmers? Walls wants USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack to open up conservation acres in counties facing severe drought. This would allow livestock to graze in these areas and allow farmers to mow the land to make hay. In a statement, Walls said in part, Agriculture is the past, present, and future of Minnesota's economy. We must do everything we can to address the challenges our farmers and ranchers are facing. But with roughly 40% of the state reaching level two drought conditions, the question is, will it be enough to help farmers? Listen to what one farmer in Scandia had to say after the storms on Wednesday. You know, I've got some friends in the Red River Valley and those people are hurting out there. Western Minnesota, they're hurting. My son's father-in-law is over in Wisconsin. There's already guys over there plowing their corn under because they're going to get nothing. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture's Rural Finance Authority Board has declared an emergency due to the dry conditions. That decision has opened up zero interest rate loans for farmers living in extremely dry areas. Hopefully that helps and hopefully Mother Nature really steps in soon. All right, Hannah, thanks. Now here
Here's a look at other top stories in your morning rush. Jury selection picks back up today in the trial of State Representative John Thompson. He's charged with obstruction from an incident before he was elected to the Minnesota House. Thompson was one of dozens of people who showed up to North Memorial Hospital in 2019 after a reported suicide attempt by a friend. Thompson's lawyer says his client was charged because he's accused police and hospital security of being racist. It'll be next year before the FDA expects to approve vaccines for children 12 and younger. The agency is now reviewing several additional months of safety data, meaning a vaccine for kids will not come before the school year. While more than 4 million children have tested positive for COVID, less than 2% have resulted in hospitalization. Help is now on the way for Minnesota firefighters who are suffering from job-related illnesses or mental health issues. Lawmakers and firefighters came together in Albertville to celebrate the passing of the Hometown Heroes Act. It will give assistance to firefighters diagnosed with cancer or cardiac issues through critical care grants. It also gives support to those dealing with emotional trauma from things they've experienced on the job. Teachers who need to stock up their classrooms are getting some help from Kohl's. Starting today, the retailer is giving educators 20% off in-store purchases when they show a valid school ID. That offer is going through Sunday. It extends to K-12 through daycare, early learning, post-secondary teachers, as well as school staff. That offer runs through Sunday. And that's your Friday Morning Rush. Sunrise is live, following one of the most talked about stories right now on our Care 11 Facebook page. And it all has to do with living life in the fast lane. I'm talking about Min Pass and how it's now going to be part of the Easy Pass family. And as you can see, it's got a lot of folks talking, a lot of folks fired up this morning. So let me explain how this all works. Right now, drivers, they can buy what's called a Min Pass from the Department of Transportation that lets them cruise alone through express lanes during peak travel times. The more traffic in that lane, the more it costs. And that can be anywhere from a quarter to eight bucks. But now, MnDOT, they're turning Min Pass into Easy Pass to connect Minnesota's system with 18 other states like New York and Illinois. This pass will allow them to travel on those tollways without having to add change or get a separate pass to go into that area. Now, if you already have a Min Pass tag, it's going to continue to work on local roads. But if you want an Easy Pass to use in those other states, you can make the switch starting August 2nd. And not every vehicle is charged, including buses, motorcycles, and if there's two or more people inside of your vehicle. The lanes are also free outside of peak hours for everyone, which MnDOT says is 90% of the time. So some people, they're really excited about this, like Bradley here who writes, I travel through Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio four times a year, and Easy Pass has really sped up the tolls. I wouldn't have it any other way. Mark says, get ready to see more tractor trailers in those lanes because we all have easy passes in our trucks. That's a good tip. And others are not so thrilled. Rebecca here writes, why are they charging us to use a road that my taxes already pay for? And Catherine wants to know how this even helps traffic. So to answer your question, Catherine, uh, according to studies from MnDOT, a single easy pass lane can move twice as many people as a regular lane during peak travel times because 80% of people using easy pass, they're riding on buses or they're carpooling. So we're moving more people around. And uh, so they're just saying, you know, that's our tax dollars. Well, as I mentioned, 90% of the time, it's not the peak travel times yeah. and it is free to use. So. There you go. All right. Well, great. Thanks for answering those <laughs> questions. Hopefully a smooth transition. Yeah. Guy. Yep. Uh, and yeah, here's your one thing weather right now. Temperatures are in the 60s and uh, we have some high level clouds with a little bit of haze. Wind speeds nice and calm for you. Dew points are in the upper 50s. Dew points also on the rise. That means it could feel a little sticky. And if you see that little blue traffic crash icon, not far from Little Canada this morning, 694 eastbound a car. Went into a pond here at 694 in Edgerton. It's blocking that right shoulder. Kind of hard to see in this camera right now, but it's not causing any traffic slowdowns. Well, it's not hard to find weekend fun here in the Twin Cities, which means Jason Rantala had the easiest job in the world. He's here with your What's Up Weekend. After a two year hiatus, Twin Cities Pride returns to Loring Park this weekend. Vendors, food courts, beer, and some entertainment return. Just no Saturday night concert, fireworks, or march. MDH will be there to provide free COVID vaccines with incentives like gift cards. It all starts 10 a.m. Saturday. If you like food made in trucks, you'll want to head to Union Depot's Lot D for the St. Paul Food Truck Festival. It features over 50 restaurants on wheels. 
You can wash down your meals with craft beer, hard cider, and spiked seltzers. There will also be vintage vinyl, a mobile escape room, and live music and games. Festivities begin 11 a.m. Saturday. Maple Grove Days provides a wide array of weekend fun, like beer and yoga, a kids parade, and an outdoor family movie night, a big truck show, kids fun run, ninja obstacle course, and fireworks round out Saturday's events. It goes through Sunday. Conquer your fears and sink your teeth into Shark Week this weekend at Sea Life. Get up close and personal with tiger, sandbar, and nurse sharks while busting shark myths and touching real shark artifacts. What's a shark artifact? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's by showing up. You won't even need a bigger boat, just a general admission ticket. And that's your What's Up Weekend. There's so much going on now. The food truck the food, Both festival? of our ears Oh my gosh, up. we were like, what? Top I Boss just, is there. I, I love Top Boss. I text my friends at 6 o'clock in the morning, told them about the food truck festival <laughs> tomorrow. So, Jason, thank you for that. Oh, good stuff. Hey, a mic, a computer, and a purpose. Meet the St. Paul doctor trying to heal the healers and bring the staggering number of physician suicide down. Then new help is on the way for the Minneapolis Police Department when mental health crisis teams are hitting the streets of Minneapolis. Plus... Oh, is this summer crush I miss? Oh, is the rush of every kiss? How everything is here. None above. Look at them. Hey. They're ready to rock. Stick around and start your Friday off feeling good. Oh,